Next speaker is my co-moderator, Dr. Cleary, who will be talking about uh, his choice of an approach to endovenous ablation. Dr. Cleary. Thank you. Um, this is incorrect. I guess I didn't uh, submit my presentation on time. <clears throat> uh, my talk is uh, on choice and approach, my choice uh, and approach for endovenous ablations, and these are my disclosures. I do consult with a uh, few companies that uh, are involved in venous technologies, uh, so the initial disclosure was an error. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you a heads up on sort of the current state of technologies in superficial venous interventions and then go what my choice is. Um, let's start with radiofrequency, the first one approved uh, by the FDA in 1997. Um, we have five-year data published now, and, you know, there is a consistent clinical uh, correlation that the VCSS clinical scores go down, and the uh, proportion of the occluded uh, uh, great saphenous veins at five years is more than 90 percent. Um, likewise, laser also, the lifetime analysis uh, demonstrates failure rates of 7.7, uh, uh, again, more than 90 percent, um, you know, at uh, uh, five years. Um, so based on these long-term data, the uh, current uh, SVS AVF guidelines have recommended either a laser or radiofrequency as the treatment of choice to eliminate great saphenous reflux uh, with a grade 1B recommendation. So that's important to know. So um, what about the non-thermal technologies? I'm sure, you know, folks who are interested in venous uh, uh, work um, are, uh, you know, keeping an eye out on these new technologies. Uh, the MOCA, which is mechanical occlusion or chemically uh, assisted uh, closure of the great saphenous vein, also called Claravein, cyanoacrylate embolization or uh, closure, also called as uh, uh, venous seal, and polydocanol microfoam uh, endovenous ablation, also called as varathena treatment. Um, so I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the important aspects of these uh, technologies in the interest of time. The purpose of these new technologies, the non-thermal, non-tumescent, NTNT, as, uh, the coin, uh, as the term coined by Steve Elias, is because uh, these technologies don't require the tumescent anesthesia, which needs few more additional pokes uh, to instill that uh, uh, tumescent solution around the great saphenous vein or the small saphenous vein before we heat the vein shut to 120 degrees-ish. Uh, temperature, 120 degrees Celsius temperature. Um, so the first one, uh, let's talk about the glue, uh, venous seal. It comes in, in a whole pack uh, uh, with the delivery gun, uh, a 3cc syringe, and the glue itself, which is proprietary with high uh, viscosity. Um, uh, without going too much into the details of the procedure, you basically uh, pass the catheter from at the lowest point of reflux on the great saphenous vein, and find uh, five centimeters uh, away from the saphenofemoral junction on the duplex and, uh, um, uh, and instill two drops one centimeter apart, hold for three minutes. Uh, those three minutes are the longest three minutes of your life. You know, play uh, some heavy metal or rock and roll or whatever music of your choices or do some jokes and then pull back three centimeters and then lay down some more glue and keep doing that for 30 seconds each until the entire vein shuts down and the, <clears throat> there is no need for compression socks according to the IFU. So there are three main studies on this. Uh, the first one uh, was done in the Caribbean, uh, fe the feasibility trial, then the European single arm study called the E-scope, and then the U.S. pivotal trial, uh, the randomized controlled trial of 242 patients. So I'm just going to show you the uh, uh, randomized controlled trial uh, results. Uh, we are working on the 24-month manuscript, and the 36-month has been uh, reported uh, at Charing Cross earlier this year. And as you can see, again, 94% success rate in, um, in uh, venous seal and radiofrequency is 91. It, this was a trial of non-inferiority design, and the p-value was uh, uh, pretty positive. They're pretty significant at three months, which was the primary endpoint. There was no significant difference in, uh, in discomfort, but there are other reasons for that, uh, we believe. Uh, but be that as it may, the next one is Claravain or MOCA. Uh, this is essentially, again, it comes in its own little kit, no generator required. Um, uh, a hockey stick kind of uh, uh, filament comes out and rotates, 
and as you pull back, you instill um, FDA-approved uh, liquid sclerosin, whether it's uh, SDS or polydocanol. And as you pull back, it basically excoriates the endothelium, spasms it, and then the vein is uh, closed shut. Um, so there is significant uh, peer-reviewed data, probably more peer-reviewed data on Clarivane than any other uh, non-thermal technologies, lots of publications. And, uh, you know, all of these have shown, again, 90-plus, as I've reddened here, um, and also uh, the pain uh, was noted to be lower than great saphenous, uh, than radio frequency, uh, frequency ablation because it eliminates that uh, uh, tumescent anesthesia um, uh, requirement. Uh, the next one is the varathena or polydocanol endovenous form, uh, foam. We've been using the uh, polydocanol and STS foam for you know decades now, which is physician. Uh, compounded with air or CO2 in the Tessari method. But uh, BTG Technologies worked on this uh, uh, pre-formulated uh, um, uh, compound, um, which has very low nitrogen, so the micro bubbles, as opposed to bubbles and implosion rates, are, are much lower, and uh, it stays as foam for longer than the uh, physician compounded uh, foam. So this, again, 12 clinical trials, you know, 1,300 or so patients. The main trial for SFJ incompetence is called the uh, VANISH trial. And interestingly, these folks uh, looked at the primary endpoint as patient-reported outcomes, which probably is what we should be doing in venous technologies anyway, right, Mahmoud? Um, rather than, you know, vein open, close, or uh, stenose, because ultimately, you know, unlike arterial disease, uh, where the endpoints are more binary, um, venous disease is a lot more complex, and uh, what they have done is they came up with uh, their own VV SIMQ score uh, uh, for improvement of symptoms, and it did uh, reach uh, the endpoint uh, uh, statistically significant. But the duplex closure rates at five, year, uh, five weeks were nine, uh, 89% and 73% at one year. Um, I think with time that will improve uh, uh, as we learn more about the procedure. So the advantages and disadvantages, uh, MOCA, uh, you don't have any foreign body left because some people consider the cyanoacrylate glue as the foreign body, although it's only 1.2 millimeters, uh, I'm sorry, milliliters of glue for the entire length of great saphenous vein. Um, MOCA um, uh, just uses, like I said, liquid uh, sclerosin that's FDA approved. Uh, it does have um, some uh, learning curve from what I understand. I don't use this. Um, and there are reports of valve, uh, the spinning um, uh, catheter, uh, the filament being stuck to the vein wall or the valve. And uh, there was one report of uh, exteriorizing the vein because they couldn't uh, free the uh, vein valve. Uh, so that's one of the uh, issues with that uh, uh, technology. It, it has a CPT code, but it's not reimbursed other than for Medicare patients. Sinoacrylate glue it is not reimbursed at all. It's completely self-pay. Um, there is no pullback time that you need to think about. It's segmental every three centimeters. You pull back and you hold pressure. You pull back. That's all. And it's a very easy procedure to do. Some of us have been doing perforator closures off-label on this, too. Uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the company is looking at that as an indication as well. There is a small phlebatic reaction that is possible in these patients. Uh, tortuous pe uh, uh, veins are difficult to access, just like the thermal technologies. And like I said, it's only self-pay patients. Um, uh, the varathena, there's no pullback. You just put three uh, uh, small uh, five French catheters into the um, uh, sheets into three different places into the vein along the leg and then inject the foam and raise the uh, leg up so you could use it uh, in tortuous veins and post-thrombotic veins and all those things. Uh, it is not indicated for uh, SSV, by, uh, small saphenous vein, according to the IFU. There are no reimbursement codes, and we use crosswalk uh, uh, codes to bill for these. And uh, initially we had some difficulty, but then it uh, all uh, has been uh, squared away. But the more, most important thing in my mind that, you know, folks who want to get into venous technologies, superficial venous technologies, is that ablation or elimination of reflux in the great saphenous vein alone is not enough. You need to know the adjunctive therapies, whether it's phlebectomy, sclerotherapy, whether it's visual or ultrasound-guided foam or liquid. You need to know to provide comprehensive care for these patients. 
Um, so let's go with these cases to show what my choice would be because that's the title. Uh, before we do that, we, uh, we saw an, uh, a nice talk on uh, Venus uh, uh, reflux testing. We published our uh, method of Venus uh, uh, testing uh, uh, in Journal of Vascular Ultrasound. Uh, there are 3D images of uh, mapping the vein uh, that refluxes. We use the 2D method, uh, which is super easy. Uh, the great saphenous vein on both medial sides, the small saphenous veins uh, joining the deep venous system, and the arrows reverse just show reflux in these veins. So with that in mind, let's uh, look at a few cases here. Um, uh, this person, for example, has just uh, uh, may have signs and symptoms and not like the uh, cosmetic uh, um, uh, appearance and want some improvement. This is our, uh, you know, plain uh, uh, cartogram we call. On the right side, we found the great saphenous refluxing, pretty straightforward. Left side, small saphenous refluxing. There was no tributary reflux. This is like one of those things that you want to start your you know, uh, career and superficial venous intervention says, it's been a year since I saw this guy and, uh, because all of mine are pretty complex. So how would you treat this, this uh, case? So this is easy. You can use a thermal, meaning laser or radio frequency. You could use cyanoacrylate. You could use mocha. You could use PEM uh, for great saphenous vein and small saphenous vein, as I said, is not indicated for for PEM, but otherwise you could use any of the technologies as long as you are comfortable with it. Here is venous hemorrhage. Uh, older uh, lady, this is classic presentation of venous hemorrhage. They bleed out into the bed. They feel like it's a site of a murder scene uh, or when they're in the shower, the blood gushes out um, and hits the wall every time they move or every time they take a breath. Um, so in this setting, let's just say the cartogram showed great saphenous vein reflux and a tributary refluxing into the area where there was that uh, venous hemorrhage. How would we deal with this? We could ablate the great saphenous vein either with laser or uh, 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 radio frequency or glue it shut uh, plus use chlorotherapy for this tributary where the hemorrhage was or use the PEM or MOCA uh, uh, through the length and the foam or the liquid sclerosant will just flow to that. So again, either one is fine. Um, here is the most common uh, patient that I see now where patient has had a great saphenous vein ablation from here to here uh, years ago, now has new symptoms, new veins showing up. And what we found uh, in this situation is the great saphenous vein is occluded, the anterior accessory saphenous vein is refluxing, and filling back into the great saphenous vein. So how would you treat this? There are a couple of options here. Uh, before in, uh, the non-thermal technologies, we would ablate this with laser or, great, uh, or ra radio frequency. We'd ablate this proximal state, uh, straight portion with, ra uh, with, uh, G uh, with uh, laser or uh, um, uh, radio frequency, and then treat these with phlebectomy or foam. Now what we can do is we can do entire uh, procedure with varathena because all you have to do is put a catheter here, here, and here and inject three uh, um, uh, different uh, five cc's of uh, varathena and the procedure will be done in 10 minutes. What about this here, subdermal veins? Anytime you have subdermal veins like this, they should generally go to surgery in my mind, but you can also ablate the proximal portion and phlebectomize the distal portion. Wouldn't do foam for that. And finally, any aneurysmal veins I send straight for surgery. I don't, uh, um, I don't do any uh, percutaneous interventions because surgery serves best. Here is an example of another patient with bilateral ankle ulcerations. Left great saphenous vein ablation did not help. What we found is great saphenous vein reflux from uh, proximal to the distal end on the right side. We also found pelvic collaterals. And then on the left side, there is deep venous reflux. There is a physiologic reversal of perforator in the thigh and then lateral collateral going up. So this is its own shunt created by, uh, by the uh, physiologic reversal of this perforator. Whenever this is happening, the problem is upstairs. This patient had IVC atresia, iliac veins absent, and prominent azagous and hemiazagous veins. So you can get a lot of information just from the vascular lab. What about perforator ablations? Well, we have to make sure that the reflux is pathologic. 
Like I said previously, there is physiologic reversal in perforators, and we need to understand what is physiologic reversal versus pathologic reflux. And you have to be careful with that because you can do more harm if the physiologic reflux is ablated and the swelling can get worse. Um, so according to the guidelines, the SVS AVF guidelines, um, the perforator uh, is considered pathologic if it has the 500 milliseconds high volume, uh, like Dr. Acherji talked about, and diameter of more than 3.5 millimeters, and it should be in close proximity to severe venous disease. So that's what is based uh, on the guidelines because we don't have enough data. It's a 2C recommendation. So my practice, I'll end with this, is... Most common is radio frequency because it's fast, it's easy. Um, I personally have less bruising with radio frequency compared to laser. I use laser when I want to combine it with foam sclerotherapy. What I do is I use laser for small saphenous veins that are small, that are short length. Landing zone is small. Um, when I want to uh, ablate veins that are superficial, so I pull back the laser fast and then inject foam through the catheter itself. Um, so that's a good uh, uh, technique for laser. Um, now, cyanoacrylate for people who have needle phobia, sock phobia, and they want both, uh, or if they want both legs done at the same time, and, you know, dollars are not an issue for them and they're willing to pay out of pocket. The other, incident, the, the other time I've used glue is in these elderly patients who are very high risk for ecchymosis or phlebitis with superficial veins, and I've used cyanoacrylate glue in more than 80-year-old patients, and it works fantastic in those patients. Now, what about varathena? I use these when I know that I can't pass a catheter, like neovascularized veins, uh, like post-thrombotic veins, like great saphenous vein had you know, acute phlebitis through the length of it. There are numerous bands in it. I can't pass the wire through it. This is a perfect procedure for that because the foam just traverses through it. And I've done this in a couple of hemophiliacs where the worry was, you know, large ecumatic uh, uh, bruising and everything else. MOCA, I have yet to do. Um, adjunctive therapies, my uh, go-to is first foam sclerotherapy, and I also do foam-assisted phlebectomy where I inject foam and then pull out the veins under ultrasound guidance so that it's precise and whatever is left inside is foam sclerosed. Thank you.